Hello everybody, um, my name is Harriet and I'm just here to tell you about living vegan in Paris. So, the first thing you need to know is there are not a lot of vegans in Paris, in France at all. Um, having said that, th those that are, are really dedicated to what they're doing because there is such a culture for meat and dairy products and eggs that uh, you have to go against it. Um, a bit like the health food industry in the US because of such a large quantity of unhealthy food. So there's always a yin and yang to everything. So in Paris, there is a lot, there are quite a few passionate companies that are against animal products and animal cruelty. So the challenges with being in Paris as a vegan are that there, for starters, there is a bias against vegans. Um, not by everybody, but a lot of people get very, very, very defensive, even if you're not trying to bring up being vegan. If you're eating something that's not meat-based or dairy-based, um, people start asking you about it, you say you're vegan, and they get super, super defensive. Um, it's natural, and I understand why they do it, but you should not get into an argument unless you're willing to um, talk forever about it because it's so food is so entrenched in French culture that it's a really big can of worms and you really should be careful about opening up that can of worms. I personally don't bother unless I think that somebody is super interested in animals or is open-minded to it. Uh, there's not a lot of point. Um, short term. Long term, it's great if you can get them on your side, but short term it's a bit of a headache talking to people that are closed-minded. Having said that, not all French people are closed-minded, but a great deal of them are because, if, especially if they've come from outside of Paris, where it's less globalised, um, southern France has a lot of meat, I suppose northern France has, I have never been there, but those that come from those areas of, Paris, um, of France tend to be quite uh, set in their ways because it's what they remember of their family, their friends. Anyway, but there are really nice people that are very encouraging and open-minded as well. Uh, another challenge is that there are limited options in mainstream restaurants. In fact, there are pretty much no options if you go to a mainstream restaurant. I mean, you can get chips, probably fries for those who aren't Australian, um, and you can get like salads, but not, not, not anything beyond that. Compared to Australia, there are very few options in mainstream restaurants for vegans, but um, more and more restaurants are starting to realise that a lot of tourists come over and want to have vegan options or vegetarian options. So it's starting to grow, but it's very, very slow. So if you were to be vegan in Paris, I would suggest if you're going out to check out the restaurants that are completely vegan, because they tend to be, well, <laughs> a lot better. Um, there are some vegan restaurants that are actually fabulous for um, people who are meat eaters as well. So, so if you've got friends and family who really want to um, have dinner with you or lunch with you, um, and you can eat as well, then there are some great restaurants. So, um, because, let's go into the pros. So, for the good things about being in Paris compared to Australia as a vegan, it, there is a great big meat culture in France. Um, consequently, there are way more meat substitutes available. I'm not sure why that doesn't extend to Australia, considering how much meat we eat in Australia. But, uh, because it's so entrenched in culture, in everyday events, special events, um, there are a great many meat substitutes simply because vegans need it so that they can socialize. So you'll find lots of products, that, especially that come from Germany, that are available in specialist stores. I'll talk about specialist stores in a second. Um, another thing that's pretty cool is because I'm Australian, but I speak fluent French, People treat me differently, um, so if you want to be treated differently as a foreigner, it's super handy to be vegan because people take you even more as a foreigner because it's unusual in France. 
So if you want to have that extra little bit of coolness or, well, it depends on who you talk to, but in open-minded modded crowds, you seem really cool to be a vegan. Or at least curiosity and interesting. Uh, the bread is amazing here. So much better than in Australia, and I'm assuming in most Anglo-Saxon countries. Uh, the baguettes, ones I get are um, traditionnel, so they're made in a traditional manner. They've got really elastic dough. That's because they add gluten, so be careful if you don't want to develop a gluten sensitivity like me. Um, <laughs> but the bread is really good, and it's so much cheaper than in Australia. Um, it's uh, one euro, between like 90 cents and one euro and 15, 20 cents. Um, for a really good quality baguette, but get the baguette tradition because, or tradition, uh, they probably won't understand if you say that, but if you just point to it, you'll see it. Um, it's a lot more elastic and better quality than the normal baguette, but it depends on what you like. I like the stretchy and the crunchy. And the, mm. the French are really into being organic, so um, consequently, the brands that have organic products to cater to the French market also are trying to extend into the vegan market, so more and more products are available. As I said, especially from German brands, because they seem to have a dominant vegan market and also organic market as well. Um, there's also a whole lot more uh, organic fruit and vegetables available if you go to markets. And that's the other thing. There are fruit and vegetable markets everywhere, in every arrondissement, so if you're in Paris, like... There's Paris and then there's suburb Paris. If you're in Paris with all the arrondissements, you will be able to find a fruit and veggie market any day of the week. <laughs> um, and in your particular arrondissement of two or three times a week. Um, and they tend to be amazing and a lot better quality fruit and veg than you would find in mainstream Australian supermarkets and supermarkets in France. The... There are heaps outside of supermarkets and outside of markets. There are heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps of vegan stores. So Naturalia, Bio C'est Bon, and Mont Vegan, they are all great. Um, Naturalia is not all vegan, but it has a lot of vegan options and gluten-free options. And yeah, French people tend to seem to be getting into the health kick. So it's not even about being vegan for a lot of French people, it's just about uh, cutting down on the products that they consider to be unhealthy for them. It's kind of trendy. Um, but Naturalia is a chain store, so it, they are all across, I think they might even be all across France, but there are quite a few in Paris. And Bio C'est Bon, it's the same. So if you want to pronounce it with an Australian accent, Bio C'est Bon, okay. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Um, there's also Amand Vegan, which is my one, my favourite one. Uh, it's got a lot of vegan options. It was established not that long ago, considering how long veganism has been around. And they've got all meat options. Um, they've even got like really nice chocolate options, chocolate mousse, cheese, lots and lots of cheese replacements. You can check out their website and even have a look um, at the products that they offer. But it's a small store, but it's so popular. There's always a queue. It's really interesting. Another one that I like is this new store that's opened up called Mon Épicerie Paris, which is completely vegan. I don't know if you can see that. It's in 31 Rue des Gravilliers in the third arrondissement. It is really, really cool. Um, it is smaller than, uh, than Amont Vegan, but it has some brands that are not available at Amont Vegan. So it includes Rebel Kitchen coconut milk that are flavoured. It's got some beers that are more organic. It's got a lot of German products. It's even got, uh, what is it called? I will put it in the description for what they've got available primarily. But uh, Linda McCartney, that's it. Linda McCartney sausage rolls and pre-made meals. So it's really cool. A little bit different to Amand Vegan. So they kind of, if you mix those two together, it make a perfect supermarket. Having said that, you're missing the fruit and vegetables, which you should get from the farmer's markets. Even though I'm not really organised and don't do that very often. Um, vegan restaurants are amazing uh, here. Having said that, they are in Australia as well. So I can't speak to other countries outside of Germany 
France or Australia, because those are the main countries I've visited, but France has some really great restaurants. The reason being, um, if no vegan restaurant will survive in the meat culture of France uh, without being good, or at least without having some, some form of appeal. So, the main ones that I would recommend are Gentle Gourmet, which is a very well known one, which is for high chance dining. It's not super out of people's price range, even if you haven't got a lot of money, if you save up a little bit, you can go there. Um, it's wonderful, they've got some really fabulous desserts, and it's pretty modern um, French slash Western cuisine in with meat substitutes, but not like, not fake meat substitutes. What I mean is like, if they have ravioli or something, they won't be pretending that it's beef, they'll just make it hearty. Um, yeah, I really love the desserts there. I haven't, I've eaten there three times, they've even got Christmas, Christmas, what else, uh, Thanksgiving, they do all sorts of events that are quite quite pricey, but it's like a degustation, so degustation, so you get lots and lots of, of, of dishes, um, and it includes a wine sometimes if you want to for an extra 20 euros or something like that. And that was really fun. Um, they've got really great options there. Another place that I like is um, Hotel de Charlotte, which is a really nice, unassuming restaurant that you would walk past. But you go inside and it's super romantic. Mm, it's still good for business business um, meetings or, or family gatherings. It's not so romantic that you can't take your mum. But um, it has some really, really nice dishes and the desserts are lovely and it's pretty i think it might be all gluten free or almost all gluten free i've been there multiple times again they still they do some major events like christmas and that sort of thing at their restaurant for a set price uh another place is le potager du marais du marais which is like um i like that but it's 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 Quality has deteriorated in the past few years, so it's not the first recommendation I would have. But if you're wanting something that is super meaty, um, flavored, uh, for those that would only go for something meaty, uh, it's really good there. They've got beef stroganoff. Well, it's not real beef; it's seitan. But they've got some really good meaty options for those that do not like anything that tastes vegan. Um, it still has, you know, you can still tell it's not meat, but it is pretty hearty, hearty food, very French food. Another place that I would totally recommend is Prasserie Lola. That one's really good for like people who just want nice, uh, kind of pubish food. But I mean, it's a Prasserie, so it's got typical Prasserie uh, food. So chips, burgers, uh, like uh, proper grilled sandwiches with lots of chips. <laughs> Again, um, it's that's a really good one for if you're wanting to invite omnivores. <laughs> So vegans and omnivores alike can go to that one and they will have no problems. Uh, it's quite far out. It's in the 15th arrondissement, uh, which I'm not in. So it takes a while to get there because I'm in Père Lachaise. So all the other ones I've mentioned aren't too hard to get to. Um, is there any... I also don't mind cloud cakes. It's great for cupcakes. Um, they've got lots of nice little cake cubits and they have really nice drinks. Uh, there's also, uh, ah yes, the G um, Patisserie. It's recently opened, about two, three months ago, and they have the most amazing pa um, pastries. Like, it is so good. They've got croissants, uh, pain au chocolat, so chocolate croissants. Um, they've also got scrolls, raisin scrolls, um, beautiful slices. Like if you go into normal pet patisserie in Paris, you will see similar things. There's lots of wild colours and, and slices built, built with custard and it's really, really, really high quality. Um, I personally like just getting a basic chocolate something. So they've got this like chocolate mousse glow thingy. Anyway, you should check it out. It's really good and it's not too expensive considering it's a vegan place to get pastries. I mean, I haven't found anywhere with that sort of high quality stuff. Oh, so good. Um, but I get pain chocolat and I just make myself a nice little coffee at home. I will give you a little taster of what that was like. 
Just a little flashback. Have a look. Yum, 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 yum. Like a real croissant. Um, if you're wanting really cheap, take away vegan food, that's not going to happen. Mostly it's very expensive in Paris. Um, there's also Hank Burger, Hank Pizza, which is a nice, cool takeaway place. But again, that's not cheap. There aren't many cheap places. But, you know, you can just make yourself something. The fruit and vegetables are a lot cheaper here than they are in Australia. Um, and the meat product, meat replacement products aren't that expensive considering. So if, you haven't, if you've got a limited budget and you're living in Paris, just cook yourself something. Make sure you're going to an apartment that's got an equipped kitchen because a lot of apartments do not at all. They've got a microwave. So those are my main tips. Um, I will add to this in another video if ever I think of it. Alrighty. Bye.